it because God wants me to say it. We're going to do something a little different this morning. We're going to start out in a prayer of repentance this morning. So if you can, lift your hands with me. And if you don't know what to say, just repeat after me. But I want you to speak with a sincere heart. God wants us to be clean today. He's going to do something in this service this morning. I believe it. So let's pray. Ask God to forgive us for anything we've done this morning, anything we have not known of. Father, we thank you today, God, for the opportunity you've given us to come here, God. But we ask you to forgive us, God, of anything that's in our hands today, God, in our heart today, God, anything that we've said, anything we've done, anything we've taken in, God. Lord, change us today. We repent before you today, God. Forgive us for any bitterness that we have, God, any ought that we have against somebody, God. Lord, we need your mercy today, God. We give you glory today and we give you honor. Everybody say in Jesus' name. If you believe you're forgiven, can you shout with a shout? Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, church, shout hallelujah. Worship with us this morning. Lord, I confess that I've been a criminal. I've stolen your bread.
bushes a wide open tomb where there should be a casket the children are singing and dancing and laughing the father is welcoming this is our homecoming roses in blue pushed up from the embers rivers of tears all from good times remember families are singing and dancing and laughing the father is welcoming this is our homecoming heaven joins in with the glorious sound and the great cloud of witnesses all gather around cause the ones that were lost they're finally found the father is welcoming this is our homecoming scarlet sin had a grim sin cross you nailed my debt to that one thing real fast. I'm sorry, brother. Um, the other night I was praying and seeking God and I began to ask him. He, I burned so much for the lost, for those prodigals, for God really puts a burden on my heart for especially pastors, kids, a burden for those that are lost, those that have been deceived, those that have walked away because they thought it was better or because they were let down, or because they seen the faults in it. And I began to ask God, God, take the things that have pounded them, and the things that have blinded them, and open their eyes, and take it from them, and let them see that what they had was so much better, and let them see they're not too far gone. And I began to ask him, and I began to pray, and he ended up speaking and he said it's happening I am I am he's bringing them back he spoke to me he showed me and I'm so thankful for that I see bright crimson robes draped over the ashes a wide open tomb where there should be a casket the children are singing and dancing and laughing. The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming. Roses in blue push up from the embers. Rivers of tears flow from good times remember. Families are singing and dancing and laughing. The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming. Heaven joins in with the sound. The great cloud of witness 
pieces all gather round Cause the ones that were lost, they are finally found The Father is welcoming, this is our homecoming Scarlet sins had a crimson cause You nailed my debt to that old rugged cross The empty slate had the empty grave Thank God that stone was rolled get ready we'll take up our tithing and offering <clears throat> got to thinking about that song when they went back into the bridge <clears throat> spent the last two and a half days out in the cold helping push some of this snow off the highways trying to make it safer for public travel it's just the job I've got now and uh just got to thinking about when it says that Jesus is welcoming this is our homecoming I just thought about walking in from that frigid cold into a nice warm church this morning into my nice warm house when I got home and thinking that that's what I think that homecoming is going to be like. Just a nice warm big hug from the Lord. If you will repeat this with me. Upon the authority of your word I have given and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family is saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Suppose the stars hear the wind and the sea into motion. Yeah. 
do that this morning. Can we lift our hands in this place? Hallelujah, Lord. You are an awesome God. Hallelujah. You've been good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. Amen. Uh, just a quick reminder, the men's ministry forged. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. This is the last time that we're going to ask if you want to join or not, because we need to get these books ordered to where we can start doing this men's ministry. So if you're interested, you're 18 years old or older, amen, please sign up out front. We got 10, which is amazing, amen. So I'm excited about what's going on there. I've been doing some studying on our Bible study that we'll be teaching, and it's it's really good, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, amen. We got a lot of needs here today. Sister Whitley, amen, we've been praying for her, just remember her, Brother Pruitt, I haven't heard anything else, I guess he's still in the hospital, huh, he came home yesterday, amen, just remember him, Jim Ballou for Salvation, Chris 
Elaine's family, Kaylee Farmer with sickness, Nicole Cook with sickness, uh, Sister Laura said earlier, the prodigals, amen, it's, uh, remember them, S- Sister Tidwell, Heather Tidwell with sickness, Sister Barb as well, amen, let's remember her. Uh, this morning, man, all morning long, I've had, I had to work this morning, but man, I, God was just, I had this song on my mind just, and it talked about He's enough, you know, there's a song, He's enough. Amen. And I was just like, it was just on my mind all morning. I, I come up to the church this morning, I prayed, and God just just put, He is enough on my heart. And all I can think about today is that He is enough. Amen. There's not a sickness in here that He cannot handle. Amen. Amen. He is enough. Amen. There's, there's not a financial situation that our, our God cannot take care of this morning. Amen. He is enough. The Word says He will supply all of our needs. Amen. He is enough. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful today. And I was reminded of Scripture this morning. I, I went back to, to where they're in the wilderness, Brother Wells, and it, it reminded me that God always did the impossible when it seemed impossible. Amen. Who else ever had water from a rock? Amen. That's the only thing that God chose because it is the hardest thing that you can get water out of. Amen. When they crossed the Red Sea, amen, God could have took them many other ways, but no, God wanted to prove a point. Amen. He wanted to show that nothing is impossible. And that if you trust in him, that he is enough. Amen. That he went through them. He went ahead of them and he went before them. They went across on dry ground and their enemies were crushed before them. I tell you this morning, under an anointing of the Holy Ghost, if you have a need in this house, our God is enough. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We're thankful for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. Lord, we ask right now that you move upon every request, every need that was lifted up to you. Lord, we believe that you are enough, God. Lord, there is nothing that you cannot do. God, by ourselves we can't, but with you, you can, amen. You can move upon every sickness, God. You can bring healing and restoration today in the name of Jesus. God, you can restore the ones that have run away from this church. You can restore that burden that fire in their heart. Lord, you can relight that fire today for the ones who walked away from your Holy Ghost, God. Lord, today it is enough, God, and we believe that you are enough. The enemy has no dominion in this city. The enemy has no dominion in this church. God, you are supreme. You are the majority. Lord, you stand alone in your majesty. God, there was none like you. There has never been any before you, nor will there be any after. Lord, you stand alone in your power. You stand alone in your majesty. You are enough for us today. Come on, church. Can we magnify him in this place? Amen. God can do it today. Amen. There is no need that he cannot answer. There is no situation that he can't intervene in. There is nothing, no bond, no chain that God cannot break in this place. Amen. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Yes, he Our God is enough, church. It's time for us to quit playing church and start being a church. It's time for us to step out in our Holy Ghost power and authority, our dominion. God has given us power over sickness, power over disease, power over illnesses, power over the enemy, power over our circumstances. He said, if you would say unto your mountain to move, it shall be moved for you. Come on, church, let's magnify him in this place in the name of Jesus. Discouraged, even when I'm discouraged, I'll remind my soul of all you've done before. I won't be distracted, even in the distraction. I will trust the one who's greater than the storm. Trust the one who's great than the storm. Say 
I'm not done moving then I'm not done praising and waiting on you praise him praise him as if the miracle has just been performed in front of your eyes and you're seeing that loved one in the altar this morning praise him as if it happened today I'm not done waiting on you God I know you're moving I know you're working I believe you're working so I'm not
when your friends tell you that there's just no, no way it's going to change, you're just going to stay in depression. When people around you tell you, this is just life, it's the way it's going to be. But I'm going to tell you, there's joy in the morning. Because the Lord said so in his word. He said there's joy that comes every morning. His mercy is new. There is nothing that is impossible for God. Hallelujah. So I want you to read these words and sing it with us. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance I will share hell and faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. That's what God's people will do. I'm going to turn my fear into praise. I'm going to shake off despair. I'm going to sing a song of praise. I'm going to dance. I'm going to break every chain. share something with y'all and I believe it's to build faith but you know there's so many times we can take healings for granted I know each one of us probably has experienced a healing in their life I remember at a young age I was a teenager and I had a rare disease in my feet and the doctor said there's nothing they can do a year later I remember the only time that I could stand I was in a wheelchair and I would stand to praise God and I remember at our old church there was a speaker and there was some stairs I remember just standing there in front of that and I told God it's time it's time for you to take it and I remember him taking it I remember that feeling coming all the way down my body and I remember never having it again I didn't know then that it was an autoimmune disease I didn't know then that I was going to face other autoimmune diseases but through this God was teaching me I had another one I had iritis that kept getting in my eye every other year it would hit and every time it would get worse and it would get worse and it would go worse I still had blind spots and they told me you're going to eventually go blind he told me I don't know why this is happening he said you have a type of autoimmune disease that's in your blood and it's good that it's not spreading somewhere else it could go somewhere else well it went long it decided to spread somewhere else I ended up getting celiac disease it was attacking my intestines I began to pray God I've had enough of it I had it for about six years you took the other away they said it couldn't be done you can do this too God told me it was New Year's. I'll never forget. It's a new year for you, Lord. I've taken it. He did. Next day, I had to go to the doctor because I was hurting so bad. I ended up going, and I had some more issues. And the doctor's like, you're just going to have to be on this medicine. There's nothing we can do. (laughs) Y'all, he took it. And you know what? He showed me that I needed to pray, God, take an autoimmune disease. I asked him, God, I want you to take it. I want every bit of it gone. I haven't had it in two years. I've not had another issue in two years. This is something they say that can't be done. This is something they say that is going to happen, and i got to live with it. You don't have to live with it, Marilyn. You don't have to live with it. It's unknown, but God can take it. He wants to take it from you. Let him do it. It's out of your control. Let him do it. God wants to heal each one of you. And I'm telling you, when you experience this type of healing, you'll never be the same again because it becomes personal. It's not someone else's testimony. It's your own. And the love for God will grow so much stronger when it's your own because it's you and God. And it's so much better when it's someone else. I want to rejoice with you. I want to thank God for you. I want this for you. But I'm so thankful for what he's given me. And I want it for you. You too. Show me one thing he can do. Show me a mountain he can move. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can part. He's the God of the breakthrough. And Show me one thing you can't do Show me a mountain you can't 
Amen. Let's lift our voices. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here today, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Show me one thing that he cannot do. Hallelujah. There's nothing that's too hard. Amen. For the God that we serve here this morning. I'm grateful. Amen. For his goodness. I'm grateful for his promises. Hallelujah. Amen. We stand here today, not on the authority of the word of man, but on the authority of the word of God. Amen. All things are possible. Hallelujah. Amen. When we believe, humanly speaking, it may be impossible, but with God, all things. Everybody say all. All All things are possible possible hallelujah amen i'm so grateful for his presence that we feel here this morning amen appreciate your response so good to see each of you here today amen on this just beautiful beautiful uh first sunday in february everybody say 42 42 days to spring 42 days to spring amen praise god hallelujah we want to curse the um uh what's that thing that saw its shadow The groundhog. We want to curse the groundhog. Amen. But nevertheless, so glad that you are here. Amen. Our parking lot is not wonderful. Uh, They they did try, but anyway, I appreciate you being here. And those of you that could not make it are joining us online. Amen. We are so glad to have you a part of this as well. Hallelujah. I believe this morning. Amen. The scripture says this. Jesus was asked. He was trying to be. They were trying to trick him. What would be the greatest commandment? And he said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He said, the second is like unto it, amen, that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. In that meaning that to love someone, we've got to to be able to love ourselves, which means we have to understand the value of who we are. I think here this morning, and, and and I don't know this for a fact, but I would say that many of us struggle thinking that we're worthy or that we're deserving. I know we're not worthy. I know we're not deserving. But to think that, God, I believe you can do it for her. I believe you can do it for him. But I don't think you'll ever do it for me. I'm telling you, church, amen, it's not about being arrogant, amen, but more than anything, it's about being confident in what the Word of God says. Amen. I am just as much a recipient of God's goodness and his miraculous power as anybody else, and so are you. Amen. Something needs to shift in our minds so that we understand, amen, that we, praise God, are not, not again, not that we've earned it. We've not earned it. Amen. But God so willingly wants, amen, to demonstrate and manifest his power in our lives. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I would like for you to turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalm 139. Amen. We're going to begin in verse 13. We're so honored to have Brother Lewis here this morning with us in service. Amen. I love and appreciate him dearly every morning. I thank God. I've, I've had three, three men of God that have invested into my life. And uh, Brother Lewis was the first, and I am so grateful for that investment. Amen. That he uh, just, and it wasn't just because I was dating his daughter. At least I don't believe it was. Amen. But I, I'm so grateful for his investment in my life. Amen. No question I would not be who I am today without that. And Brother Lewis, I thank you for it. Amen. I love you. Amen. Praise God. Psalms 139 and verse number 13. The Bible says, For you formed, everybody say formed, you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you, When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance yet being unformed. Notice what he said there. Your eyes saw my substance, amen, being yet unformed. And in your book they are all written and days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Amen. There's a lot being said right there. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Everybody understand that that's written about you as well. How precious are the thoughts, your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. I want to for a few moments this morning. 
Amen. Now, let me, let me just clarify. We didn't have church Wednesday. So I can take Wednesday's night's time and tonight and combine them, right? Amen. I, uh, this, I, I have, I've, I've, this has been stewing in me for several weeks. And I want to preach to you for a few moments on the unbreakable bond. Amen. The unbreakable bond. My prayer tonight, today is that God would anoint our minds that we can have a more clearer understanding of the value that we have in Him. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank You today. I thank You for Your Spirit, I feel. I thank You, God, this morning as we've gathered together. I pray this, Lord, as You will anoint our hearts, our minds. Help us today to hear, God, and to receive. Give us comprehension. Give us understanding. Lord, I thank You today. God, we thank you for your anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated for a moment here today. Hallelujah. The human body is an amazing creation. Hallelujah. The subatomic particles that make us who we are, uh, that is not seen with the naked eye, is... Uh, in itself is amazing. If you were to take all of your DNA uh, out of just one single cell, and if you would stretch it out, that, that one single cell would have about a five foot long worth of DNA, if you will. This same DNA is so thin that it is about uh, 50 trillionths of an inch. Everybody say that's small. Amen. Praise God. If you took all the DNA from inside all the cells in the body. And if you squeeze them together, you could fit them inside of a regular size iced cube. But then if you were to take the same DNA and from all the cells, and if you would stretch them out end to end, it would reach between 50 billion and 170 billion miles. The huge disparity of range is accounted for because all estimations are in fact theoretical. These amazing facts about our DNA are just a small part of what makes us who we are. A portion of our physical selves and that, that can be scientifically, if you will, quantified. But there is so much more to being a human being than having DNA. We possess other very important dimensions like soul, spirit, emotions, psyche, which all of these are intangible and cannot be quantified. The Bible tells us in the beginning, in Genesis 2 and verse 7, that the Lord God, everybody say formed, formed man from the dust of of the ground. Up until the creation of man, everything that was created had been spoke into existence. But now we see God in Scripture forming man from the dust of the ground. Psalms 33 and 9, he said, For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. And here the Lord God formed man. The word formed means to fashion. It means to create an object out of an existing material. In Genesis chapter 1, we read that in the beginning, uh, amen, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. And verse 2 says that the earth was without any form. Amen. It was void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering uh, over the face of the waters. And then that first day, He said, let there be light, and there was light. On the third day, we read in verse 9 that God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. God spoke the earth into existence. And then God took what He already created and then began to form man from that substance. Interestingly, the 59 different elements found in the human body you can also find in dirt. I don't think that's a coincidence. I read a story of a group of scientists decided that it was time for someone to go to God and tell him that he wasn't needed anymore. 
One of the scientists, they, he volunteered, and so he went to God, and he said, God, you know, a bunch of us have been thinking, and uh, I've come to tell you that we really don't need you anymore. I mean, you got to consider, we've really been doing some things. We've come up with great theories uh, and wonderful ideas. We've cloned sheep. We're, we're getting ready to, get really close to cloning a human. So as you can see, we really don't need you. God kind of nodded his head, and understandingly, he said, all right, I see. All right, no, no, no hard feelings. But before you go, let's have a contest. What do you think? Scientist says, sure. What kind of contest are you thinking about? God said, let's have a man-making contest. Absolutely, the scientist says, no problem. He bends down, he picks him up a handful of dirt, and he says, okay, I'm ready. God replies, no, 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 no. You get your own dirt. Everything prior to creation of man was spoken into existence. And with what had already been created, God, amen, took that substance and began to form man. Psalms 102 and 25 says, Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In John chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God and verse 3 says this all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made I'm telling you friend the missing link that Charles Darwin had in his theory of natural selection it was without God that's why you can't connect the theory of evolution to creation the missing link is God God, without Him, nothing was made that was made. That's why you can see God throughout all of creation. If you look close enough, if you listen close enough, you'll see God in nature. You'll see God in the trees. You'll see God in the sky. Amen. He is throughout all creation. Because without Him, nothing was made that was made. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He fashioned him. Psalms 139 verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. We read this in our text. And covered me in my mother's womb. Psalms 119 and 73. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Isaiah 44 and 24. Thus says the Lord your Redeemer. And he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things. Things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah in chapter 1 and verse 5, he said this, he said, before I formed you, I knew you. Now, now I, I, I asked the ministry some questions prior to, to service this morning, and, and, and it goes a little deep, but, but you got to consider... Before I ever existed, God says, I knew you. Amen. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 in the New Living Translation, it says, the Lord, the Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. Now, from a human perspective... Our point of origin or our beginning is on our birth date. Mine would be May 26, 1975. But can I tell you this morning, our beginning from God's perspective is even before the moment of our conception. Amen. Let me ask you this morning, God is eternal, correct? Correct. Does God have a beginning? Is there a moment where we can say that prior to His existence that God did not exist? God is eternal. Eternal is infinite. It goes both directions. It will, he will always be and He has always been. There is never a point in any kind of history where God has not existed. 
Now that's hard for us to understand. We're, we're, we're mortal people. Amen. But let me, let me, let me just kind of stretch out here a little bit and, and just bear with me a moment. Does an eternal soul have a beginning? You and I this morning, we're eternal, right? The Spirit, amen. Because the Bible says that He created us or He formed man out of the dust of the ground and then He breathed into His nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Eternal. Now again, this is where we may not understand and it may be beyond our, our ability to comprehend. But I, I want to suggest today that if we are eternal, in the eternal perspective of God, we have always existed. Don't cut the limb off, alright? Just hang in there. Genesis 3 and 22 says, And the Lord God said, Behold, amen, the man has become like one of us, this is in the garden, uh, to know good and evil. Uh, and now lest he put out his hand and take also uh, the tree of life and eat uh, and live forever. Uh, amen. God had to banish uh, Adam and Eve from the garden uh, so that his fallen condition uh, would not be a permanent condition. Interestingly to me, the verse above that in verse 21, it tells us that God had had to kill an animal to, 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 to shed blood to provide a covering for the nakedness of Adam and Eve. I'm telling you, friend, from the very beginning, God has been working for on a redemption plan so that you and I would not have to remain in a fallen condition because that was not the purpose in which we were created. Hallelujah. Genesis 1 and 26, God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Amen. That, that can be a, a scripture that can be debated. Who is God talking about when He said, let us? There's, there's many, many opinions. But let me just summarize it this way. In verse 27, God said, so, or the scripture says, so God, singular, created man in His own image. Hallelujah. In the image of God created He Him. The word image is a representation resembling something or someone. The word likeness means that which is a, a, a pattern. The, the biblical depiction of God, it begins in the beginning in Genesis 1 and 26. The Hebrew word image, which is salim, it refers to again a representation, an image, or a likeness. It often refers to the way that an idol represented a god. The word likeness, which is the Hebrew word demut, amen, it means similar in appearance, usually a visual appearance. Those two separate words have, have distinct meanings. But when you take those together, amen, together likeness, amen, complements image to mean that man is more than a mere image of God, but rather he is a likeness of God. We're not God, okay? We're not omnipotent. We're not omnipresent. We don't have all power. But I'm going to tell you, we are a likeness of God. The eternal aspect of who we are, that's where we get our likeness with Him. Because we are eternal beings. You and I will never cease to exist. Amen. But because of the fall of man, amen, God provided redemption so that we would be able to be in eternity with Him. Genesis 2 and 7, He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Job 33 and 4, it says, The Spirit of God was may, has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The word breath can refer to the very Spirit. Spirit of God. Not a spirit, but the Spirit of God. In the New Testament, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place, amen, in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and God filled them all with the Holy Ghost, right? That word wind, the Greek word is pneuma, amen, it means wind, it means breath, it means life, and it means spirit. 
The very Spirit of God. John or John 4 and 24. God is Spirit. Amen. The word Spirit there is pneuma. Amen. I'm thankful when God breathes, aren't you? I'm thankful to feel and to not just feel it, but I'm thankful for the breath of God. Amen. Has filled me. Amen. It is a difference maker in my life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. We read John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Verse 14 says that the the Word was made flesh. I am so thankful. Amen. And I understand there's a lot of people that struggle in understanding how how, how can Jesus and God be the same. I I get somewhat. I wasn't raised this way. I, I saw it from a whole different perspective. But I'm telling you, friend, it makes sense to me today. Can I just be honest with you? When I was a kid... And I was taught about the, the God the Father and God the Son. I, I really had a complex with God the Father. Because I never could understand why God the Father would send His Son to do His job. But when I understood that it wasn't God the Father sending His Son, but it was God, amen, who robed Himself in flesh, and He became the Lamb for sinners slain. I understood how important that that would be. And and, and Jesus came and He was preaching. And the Bible tells us about a rabbi by the name of Nicodemus that wanted to meet with Him in the night, in in the cover of darkness. And and Jesus answered and said, He said, Most assuredly I, I say to you, Unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now you've got to understand Nicodemus is trying to understand it. He's trying to comprehend what Jesus is saying. And so Nicodemus in his own mind, he said, wait, wait, wait a second. How can a man be born when he is old? In other words, I've done it once. I don't want to do that again. Neither does his mother, I promise you. Amen. Can can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? He's just trying to comprehend it. Then Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. That born again experience is what redeems this sin condemned flesh. If it's not, if I'm not born again, I cannot enter the kingdom of God. But the good news is, amen, you and I, we can be born again. Hallelujah. There are those today that will say, the reason I am what I am, the reason I'm in in the lifestyle that I'm in, I was born this way. The reason I'm an alcoholic today is because I was born this way. That can be debated. But I'm going to tell you, if that's the case, you better be born again. Because when you're born again, old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Hallelujah. Then he talks about the wind blowing where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. We've had that mighty rushing wind experience. We, we understand what, it talk, what it's talking about. Amen. To be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the breath of God that is breathing in. That is what's giving our eternal soul, our eternal spirit. Amen. Eternal life. Hallelujah. The Word of God is, is full of symbolism. Amen. There's all kinds of examples. And in, in also it uses birth as being a symbolism. Amen. The new birth, not just here in John chapter 3, but actually it's rooted in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 26. He said, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. I'm thankful this morning. This is not just something. I don't come up here and sign a book and get my, my name on the membership roll. But it is, a, it's something within, it's the inner space of me that has changed because God, amen, He renews me. Amen. I come to an altar of repentance. I die to my sin, but then I'm buried in the name of Jesus. I enter covenant and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I come across something my wife actually shared with me a few weeks ago. And uh, it's called fetal microchimerianism. I probably butchered it. I'm sure I did. But when a woman is pregnant, the cells of the baby, amen, migrate into the mother's bloodstream. And then those cells will circle back into the body of the baby. For 41 weeks or however long, the cells circulate. They merge backwards and forwards. And after even the baby is born, many of those cells will remain in the mother's body, leaving a permanent imprint on the mother's tissues, her bones, her brain, skin. And often these cells will remain in the mother's body for many years. Amen. You may be separated from your children today, but I'm going to tell you, on a subatomic level, you've got part of them with you. Hallelujah. See, the interesting thing is the cells from the baby, they function like they are stem cells. Stem cells can develop into any cell depending on the need of the mother. Whatever the mother is lacking in, these cells can, can, be, can accommodate that need. The mother cells can get old and they need to be replaced. So the fetal cells are, are the kind of on standby mode and they're ready to help by providing replacement cells. Amen. Matter of fact, I read this. It says that the, the extra supply of these stem cells by the, by the baby may be the reason why women, women tend to live longer than men. It has nothing to do with intelligence, right? Y'all ladies just got extra cells. Amen. And here's another interesting point. You say, well, Pastor, I've, I've never been able to have children, but I've, 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 I've had unfortunate, I've had miscarriages. Even if pregnancy doesn't go full term, or even if you had an abortion, these cells still migrate to the mother's bloodstream. So in essence, the baby helps repair the mother while the mother builds the baby. Let me tell you what, what a healthy church is. A healthy church is a church that's producing children. <laughs> Amen. You say, well, that depends on your perspective, Pastor. Because I, I, I see sometimes that people can be nothing but difficult. Everybody said, Amen. But with that difficulty comes health. The baby helps repair the mother while the mother is building the church, building the baby. <laughs> the church is considered in scripture as being the mother of us all. Amen. And I'm telling you, friend, you just like a child, you don't have to beg a healthy child to grow. You don't have to beg a healthy church to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me go as far to say this, back on our eternal question. Amen. There are souls that are within the church that have yet to be born. God said, before I formed you, I knew you. I understand it's hard for us to comprehend it. Amen. But there is an eternalness to the very spirit that God created us with. I, I, I know we're not God, but I'm telling you, friend, we, we're so quick to, to make a judgment based on what we see. But Paul said, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, because the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. There is an eternal power that's within the church. I realize it may have been a few weeks since the baptistry has been used, but I'm going to go ahead and keep praising God. You just show me something that's too hard for God. You just show me, amen, a mountain that he cannot move because there are souls that are within the church that are yet to be born. Hallelujah. And then, amen, I listened to Sister Payne. And she was sharing that burden that she had of prodigals. Amen. Of every day I pray for the pastors of this section. And I don't just pray for them. And I pray for their churches to have favor. I pray for revival. But I pray for their wives as well. But I pray for their children that God would cover their children. Oh, amen. But let me tell you, when that child was born, 
If that, if that child has had a born again experience, you say, Pastor, they are so far from God today. They are not even close to living for God. They show no sign that they will ever come back to God. Let me tell you, just the symbolism here, just like a mother can, can birth a child and part of that child, amen, remains in them, but also part of that mother, amen, remains in that child and that child can go as far as they can possibly go. But I'm telling you, friend, you can't look at things from a temporal point of view. you got to see things through God's perspective. And He knew it even before He ever formed them. That's why the Bible says to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I've heard parents say, oh, I don't understand that verse. Look at them today. But you're not looking at it from the perspective that God is presenting it. Amen. He will not depart because God sees what you and I cannot see. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Verse 9 says this, Whoever has, Amen, that's past tense. If you had an experience somewhere in your past, there is no statutes of limitations here. If it happened five years ago, if it happened 10 years ago, if it happened 30 years ago, it does not matter. As long as you've had that experience, amen, that whoever has been born of God does not sin. For His, that's capital H, His seed remains in Him. He cannot sin because He's been born of God. Understand, friend, that when somebody has been born again and they walk away from God. Amen. They do not in any way do they quit being a son of God. You say, well, they don't look like us. They don't talk like us. They don't act like us. I get all that. So did the prodigal son. He took the inheritance of his father and he wasted it on, 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 on crazy living. And, and he said, you know, when he come to the point in his life, I, I, I can go back home and I can be the servants at my dad's house. They've got it better than I. I'm just going to go back home and I'm going to be a servant. But when his father saw him coming back, the Bible says the father ran and embraced him and said, my son who was lost is now found. He he did not cannot he did not consider him not his son but as long as there was breath in his lungs amen he was his son <laughs> matter of fact amen in that in that story he tells his servants you go you go get the fatted cow calf whatever it was <laughs> amen and again, I may be stretching it just a little bit, but it's almost as if it's implying that when the son took his inheritance and left, amen, that the father started making preparations for his return. I've been raising this cow for one purpose. Nobody gets this cow. This cow does not get to be processed until my son comes home. How do you know he's coming home? I'm telling you, I'm seeing things from an eternal perspective. I'm telling you, friend, your family, your loved ones, they may seem so far from God today, but you've got a God, amen, that's above you, that's looking out. He's making preparation, amen, for your family to come home. This seed, it's the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 and 9 tells us, Amen, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That is why we so passionately preach, Amen, the, the necessity of being filled with the Holy Ghost. I know that we get crazy. I know that we get kind of spastic sometimes. We scream, we holler, we snort, we snot, we spit, but but oh, please understand. Amen. It's because we are passionate. Because we understand the Word of God that tells us we've got to have the breath of God within us. And when that has happened, 
when that experience has been happened, amen, you, you will never be the same. I have had people come and say, I just don't understand. Preacher, I've tried to walk away from God. I tried to be like just like everybody else. You will never be like everybody else. Why is that? For his seed remains in you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The word formed there is a little different than the word we found in Genesis 2 and 7. It means to plan, devise, prepare, think about future actions with a particular plan of action. What that tells me is the weapon that the enemy is designing. He's put a lot of thought into it. And from his perspective, he says, I got him with this. This, is, this right here will be the end of them. But the scripture says, no weapon, no matter how many plans, no matter how it's been devised, no matter the level of preparation, no matter the, the, the thoughts of, of future actions with a particular plan of action, none of it will succeed. Oh, <laughs> you may think this morning... Well, Pastor, my family's been attacked. I've got, I've got things going on that I never dreamed would happen. I feel like I've been so just ripped apart. I, I understand that. I realize how that can feel. But I'm telling you, somehow within the, within the Spirit of God within you, you've got to rise above those circumstances. And you've got to know that that is not going to be successful. The devil, you ain't got my children. Devil, you ain't got these prodigals. There's prodigals we've been praying for for years and years and years. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm not giving in and I'm not going to believe that devil you got them because I'm telling you, before they were ever formed, amen, God knew them and his thoughts were abundant concerning them. We're getting ready to land. Amen. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 8. It says, who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made, be, be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? But here's, here's the key. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. They're already there. Amen. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've been guilty of it. I've, I've, I've thought about it many times thinking, well, maybe once we get this in place or this position filled or maybe if we ever get a hold of this kind of resource, may, maybe then it'll happen. Let me tell you, it, it, it's not hinging on resources it's not hinging on positions. They're already here. Amen. What, what, what the difference maker is, is when as soon as Zion travailed. That word travail can be interpreted labor. When you look up the word, it, it, it does not mean to sit there calmly. Have you... My, my wife has had three children... And in all three of those experiences, she wasn't too calm. And neither would I have been. Amen. That, that, that birthing process, it, it just don't seem like it should happen that way. But it's God's design. It's intense. There's, there's moments of anguish. There's pain involved. Amen. There's some desperation at moments. But here's the thing about the travailing and the labor. It doesn't last forever. <laughs> Jesus even made mention of it that a mother, when she's holding that baby in her arms, that all the pain that she just encountered, she don't really think of that as much because she's got the baby. 
But there has to be a moment of discomfort. There has to be a moment where we as the church says, okay, God, I'm going to quit making excuses. I'm going I'm to quit just, you know, going through motions. But I'm going to allow you to get me in a position which is the position that Elijah got in on the top of Mount Carmel. It was a birthing position. And he began to pray. And guess what? He prayed until something happened. This unbreakable bond that you and I, we have with him. See, this furthermore is the reason why we we believe in the sanctity of life. Amen. This is why abortion is such a horrible thing that our nation has legally made available. It's not just the killing of a baby. It's the attempt that mankind has of destroying what is eternal. Amen. The Bible tells us we 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 are formed from the dust and we will return to the dust. That baby is eternal. That that eternal part of that baby is not destroyed. But I'm telling you, amen, God has a purpose for every child, every baby, every person under the sound of my voice. So you may think this morning, I just, I don't feel like I got any worth. I just don't think I'm worth anything. I'm telling you, friend, before you were ever formed, God had thoughts towards you. He knew you. He, he, he thought much about you. I promise you, it is the lie from the pits of hell to get you to think that you are not valuable. It's that unbreakable bond that God says, I will go to whatever extent I've got to go to in order to bring redemption to your life. As we stand here today, (laughs) amen. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. My soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. I was not made in secret. For when I was made in secret, skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. What is that? I don't really know, to be honest with you. That substance is not tangible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. God saw my substance before I ever became a physical being. And in your book, they are all written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Even before I had my first day, my, took my first breath of air, or before my heart ever started beating in the womb of my mother, God said, I've done fashioned your days. I'm telling you, church, you've got a purpose. God has a plan for you. Don't you let the enemy or the adversary tell you any different. Hallelujah. But God wants to, you to know there is a bond. It is unbreakable. Amen. The devil can't do anything. He can't break it. You can be in the lowest place that you've ever been. But I promise you, friend, that bond with God is still there. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. <laughs> Amen. Every head bowed and eye closed today. There may be some here this morning that you've been running. You've been running from what? Amen. God may be not just calling you to do, but, but purposing in your heart to do. I'm telling you, can I encourage you? Quit running. Come on, why don't you just let God mold you into what He wants you to be? Hallelujah. Amen. I promise you, amen. You, if you, even if you keep running, God ain't going to quit chasing. Amen. Hallelujah. The calling of God is without repentance. Uh, I tell you, friend, we, need, we don't need to look at it from a temporal point of view, uh, but we need to look at it from an eternal point of view. Uh, every young person here this morning, uh, amen, you may be questioning and wondering, what is your purpose of existence? Uh, I promise you, God has already put a plan in place. Uh, amen. His thoughts are already there. Uh, he said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Uh, amen. 
plan. The reality is this. The part that I play in this plan is I surrender and I submit to God. And I say, God, it's not what I want, but it's what you want. I submit and surrender to your plan. It's not about me, oh God. It's not about what I want. It's about you. I promise you, you'll find that purpose in your life. It'll fit. Amen. That like a hand in glove. Come on, church. Is there anybody here today? Amen. You struggle to find your purpose. Why don't you surrender to the one that has an unbreakable bond with you? Come on, church. Hallelujah. I want to find my purpose. I want to know what my calling is. God, I surrender it to you today. Hallelujah. God, you're about to birth some souls. God, there are some prodigals that are going to come home. Hallelujah. You've been preparing for that, Lord. Hallelujah. God, help us to be in a position of surrender and submission to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He is jealous of me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh. Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so in his eyes and grace is in no eyes and grace is in no
the inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets When I think about the He's somewhere here. Uh, Pastor Lewis, my family and I attended your church years ago. 
thank you for the time you invested in us. We give you praise and honor. We thank God for you. Pastor Oils, thank you for the time you've invested in me, you and the first family. Thank you very much. Folks, I went to the, my bank, checked on my, you know, uh, money that was there, and God put a sum of a little bit more money in there that should have been. God's on the move and blessings. What he's doing for one, I guarantee you he's most assuredly doing for others or getting ready to or already has. Hand of God is moving. Two, uh, two weeks ago, on a Tuesday, I was at work. And I looked in front of me to the right, and I seen a man that stood in a brown coat. And as soon as he appeared, he was gone. And he was an angel. And sometimes we don't, I don't understand right then. There was a time of God's revealing. And then I came back to come back to the same area. And I thought we was in an earthquake. The ground beneath me shook, kind of like my shaky right hand shakes. My forklift began to shake. My body began to shake. I thought, oh my Lord, it's happening. And I looked around. I didn't see nobody shaking but me. And I'm like, oh Lord, what's going on here? And God, he spoke to me and he said, all that can be shaken will be shaken. And I rest, you know, every time the Lord speaks or he gives me a word or he gives me a word of prophecy, I begin to learn because God just sent me to the school of understanding. It's going to be backed up by the word. And so God took me to the word in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 26 and 27. It says, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised. Promised. That's a key word. Promised. Saying yet, but also the heaven. It's going to shake. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are, that those the things which cannot be that cannot shake may remain. That cannot be shaken may remain. Church, I'm 55 years old. And I've seen some times. I was raised in some bad times. But never in my life have I looked around and i seen the world being shook like it's being shook now. And the shakening has just start. The shakening has just started. The sh the sh within the shakening, there's a, a negative shakening. We can look all around and see a negative shaking. But I most have sat here and stand to you in the full assurance and the power and the authority of the Lord. There's going to be some more shakening. God's going to send it. The baptistry street's beginning to be shaken. You can look what we believe. We believe in a positive God because He died upon a cross. A positive sign. God's fixing a move. I've often wondered, God, why? Why? Why do you constantly have me to speak about this? I don't think nobody takes me serious in the morning. He said, I don't care. You do what I tell you. Yes, sir. There's fixing to be people down here. There's fixing to be a, 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 a positive move of God. A positive shaking. There's going to be people repenting. People being filled with the Holy Ghost. God's going to move by His Spirit. God's fixing in due time to fill up this church. But in the meantime, in the meantime, there's a shaking coming. And all that can be shaken will be shaken. We got the Lord. We cannot be shaken. We are an immovable force. Because there's a name that's like a strong tower that we run into. Don't let the world and the things of the world and the government and the shakening that's going on in our world and the unification of the one world government, these things will come to pass. But the church is going to prosper. The church is going to prosper through it. There's a positive force in His name's Jesus and He's going to take care of us. When we see this shakening, remember, we're in a negative world, but we're in a positive force. We're in the part of the positive shakening. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise. Praise God. God is 
Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he's doing it. <laughs> Praise God. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged. I, I, I hear reports of churches here in even North America. I hear, I hear churches in, in foreign lands that even among all the, the shakening and all the, the difficulty of this um, last couple of two or three years, but, but even, even then, the, the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We're seeing great things happen. Uh, and again, this is not because of how great you are, or how great I am, or it's all about Him. Amen. Uh, again, the souls that are going to be added, they're, they're, all, they're here. I'm telling you. Amen. Because sometimes we put, the, we put all the pressure on our souls. Well, I've got to go out here and I've got to... I'm telling you, you just got to gotta be connected to God, or submitted to God. God is going to bring it to pass. Paul said, I plant, Apollos watered, God gives the increase. I'm going to do my part, but God's the one that does. He determines, amen, the result. Aren't you thankful for his goodness here today? One more time, let's put our hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God, amen. As we're getting ready to dismiss, don't forget uh, our, our Save Our Children rally. Section 4 rally is tonight or this afternoon. It's at 5 o'clock. It's at uh, Kennett, Brother Sharon's church. And uh, the church van will be leaving the church at 3.30. And uh, I want to make this announcement because they're going to be recognizing Sister Dorothy. She loves all this recognition stuff. But she was a uh, teacher of the month, and they're going to recognize her at the rally. So we want to have a, if we can, a tremendous showing from our church to be down there. Amen. She obviously is... Most definitely worthy of that. And so, amen, that's tonight. Brother Chuck Carr will be, will be preaching. I promise you he is a tremendous preacher. And I'm looking forward to a great time this evening at Kennet at 5 o'clock. Don't forget our youth are selling the Oreo bonbons. When's the deadline on that? Friday? This coming Friday? Come on now, get your bonbons, all right? These are, these are going to be in heaven, I promise you. Uh, if you have a Valentine, if you don't have a Valentine, you just need to get bonbons because they are going to be delicious. And uh, I, 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 again, uh, also if you if you have any uh, uh, material sitting around, uh, cream cheese, what Oreos or Oreo like cookies, uh, 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 almond bark. I mean, I, we're going to make some donations, but I, I, there's quite. Do we have an idea how many we've ordered? Awesome, awesome. All right, so amen. Uh, thank you for that. If, again, get your order in. We, uh, our Southeast Missouri camp meeting is coming up next month, March the 10th and 11th. That'll be at Black River Coliseum. Raymond Woodward is our night speaker. Uh, speaking of him, this coming week is Renew Marriage Retreat, and Brother Woodward is a speaker there Thursday and Friday. And if you are uh, scheduled to go, uh, please, uh, we need to get your, your money for, for, the, for the rooms. We need that by Wednesday night. And then, uh, amen, uh, we'll be leaving here at the church at 10 o'clock on Thursday if you'd like to travel along with us. Anyway, we're going to have a great time and looking forward to that. We've got a few birthdays as we dismiss. Callista Stevens had a birthday. Pam Griffin had a birthday. And... Uh, Colson and Emerson had a birthday. Amen. Praise God. Let's sing happy birthday to them this morning. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best one you ever God. Lord, we love you. We thank you today, Lord, for your blessings. We're thankful for your word. We pray, God, as you will go with each one of us, bless and, Lord, uh, keep each one of our families. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord today. Brother Wells, we need yes. to meet with the youth over here. All the young people need to meet with Brother Sister Halls over here as we dismiss.